All right, every week here on Off the Bench, Heart to Heart, SEC Network, ESPN, XFL, play by play, really the voice, uh, the voice and the face of the Southeastern Conference. And he's with us every week here on ESPN, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. What a day for the hearts. Tripping with the hearts today as they're road tripping. Uh, as they get in the car, pack it up this morning. Tommy and the gang. Good morning. How are Hi. you, Tom? <laughs> oh, oh, that sounds like the road. <laughs> yeah. It's, it already smells like the road in this vehicle right now. I, I, fantastic. How I, many deep you got? How many? How many in the? Uh, how many in the? Uh, in the? Uh, in the vehicle? We got a full roster of five. So we will take on your five any playground between here and the beach. Check will, your phone. Uh, the Hesters are calling. I just pictured Tom slapping a bologna sandwich kind of centrally <laughs> against his tongue <laughs> as Christy Brinkley drives next to him. Tom, can you draft in SUVs on the interstate? Yeah. I, I mean, full disclosure, will you tell people that that was my text to you this yes, morning? Yes, I will. <laughs> I will. I, I will. I will. That was, that was one of the questions. Tom and I usually it's, go back and forth. It's a question we've all wondered, though. I find that if the height matches up, you can save a little gas mileage. Now, granted, that probably translates into following entirely too close to an 18-wheeler, so do what you will. But, uh, yeah, if you're in an SUV, you can't do it on a sedan. But maybe maybe get behind another SUV, Tom. You save a little money there. Well, I got behind a Ford Super Duty leaving town, and Oof. Oof. Uh, we were kind of stuck. We were stuck together for about five miles. Uh, the hard part is I feel like I need a sign on the car that says willing to draft, you know? <laughs> kind of like a Morris couple's put a pineapple out on the porch on the beach. <laughs> uh, like, uh, willing to draft, find a partner, let's go and then you just hook bumpers and you and you haul and you not only save gas but you save time how much uh, how much windshield time you looking at today uh with solid nine Ooh. solid nine we're gonna we're gonna peel off Damn. grab a chick-fil-a about midway through the ride yep. you know because yep. that's that's the thing what clark w griswold got right in vacation is and i i highly recommend if you have the means Renting a car for a road trip when you have kids is a no-brainer. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you need the family truck. Good point. But the idea that you can look in the rearview mirror and your kid is, you know, eating fries and wiping ketchup on the ceiling, it, it can be bothersome if it's your own car. Yep. If you're taking it back to national and all it has to be is on like four wheels and you're fine, th- there's no better feeling than just. Dropping that thing off, let them fumigate huh. it, and don't have to think twice. Just as long as you got the full tank of gas, Tommy. Who cares what else is in there, man? Huh. Full tank of gas. We uh, dropping it back off. Hey, Jordy, you you know how that insurance uh, I works do. on rentals. I can you? explain it. It works out <laughs> easy. And, and Tom's got a great plan. <laughs> I got good stories. Tom's got good stories. Yeah. Uh, you got good stories about Ben McDonald, and, and you wrote his scouting report, and he was just named to the ESPN All-College Baseball Team, which – Made a lot of sense, especially around here. Former number one pick, got the 19, retired at Alec Box Stadium. Uh, but but there's other Tigers on that team as well. Yeah, Alex Bragman and Todd Walker both made the team. I I, uh, I was busy loading up the luggage rack and putting the bikes on last night, so I didn't see the entire team. But, uh, you know, obviously well-deserved for Ben, and we all not only love him but respect him. But he's such – he's so good for the game of baseball, whether it's when he's doing Orioles games or on the SEC Network and ESPN with us through the College World Series because he's, he's got character. He's got personality, right? And so they asked me to write the scattering report for him. And he's, he's mad because I gave him a 10 on fashion. And I'm like, listen, you haven't bought a new sport coat since 1997. And the I scale was out of 100. If you – Right. <laughs> well, it's on the baseball grading scale of eighty. All right, so eighty is Hall of Famer. So he's got he's got eighty personality. He's got seventy hair. Even though the last time we talked about it, he not only has had the same haircut his entire life, he's had the same barber his entire life. Wow. Think Do about you- that. That's amazing. That's like some. Carl Reiner stuff, yeah. poor little something out on the curb. Does, does he? Does does his son get cut at the same barber? Because his Looks son's like an it. impressive figure himself, uh, school leader, all this stuff. But he has that exact same Ben McDonald, like military, straight out the 1950s haircut. Billy Cannon. Yeah, I don't know if Jace has the same. I mean, I don't know if he has the same barber. I think they hmm. started there. Ben showed up one day and um, 
he had he had obviously done some some work on his own. I said, "Hey man, what's what's up with the hair?" And he said, "Well, I left the barber shop. My my guy's not as his eyesight isn't what it used to be. And he's got a little <laughs> bit of a leaky." So his flat top came out looking a little bit more like Bobby Brown. You know, it, it wasn't supposed to be sideways, but it was. So he had to get out the level and, and work it out. There's no one I would trust more, by the way, among any of my friends to run the heavy duty machinery oh. than Ben McDonald. How much and less of a dude. Of it's like, how much less of a man do you feel like after watching him on social media? I mean, he's like driving around oh, on he, S, it just. ATVs, he's dropping trees, he's fishing, he's cutting stuff up in swamps. I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't deal with this. Yeah, I, I, I can't uh, hold a candle to that. You know, I during uh, this whole quarantine scenario, I'm trying to work through a lot of old TV shows. He's working through a to-do list that uh, that would make most general contractors blush. I mean, it, right. it's amazing. He put in a not a duck blind, but like a duck pond the other day in his, on his farm. He's doing everything. That's the one I had to turn off. I was like, this is too much, Ben. Um, so, Tom, what's the, what's the age range uh, of the five? We go 9 to 14. So we just had a, we just had a great Lizzo sing-along. Hmm. Um, she looks great. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not including my wife's age in that, okay? No. So I no. know what she's sitting yeah, no, I'm glad your wife isn't in the nine to fourteen range, Tom. That would be uh, that that would be problematic to say the least, especially in 2020. So what's as on the, soon as I cross state lines, I'd have to turn around. Hey, if you're in Alabama though, you might be all good. So just stay in Alabama, and we won't have any problems. What's on the itinerary? Uh, we're heading to the beach. We're going to see the in-laws. Um, we're trying to get as much sand time as we can. Um, might spend some time on the golf course and, and a whole lot of nothing. It's for change of scenery, number one. Uh, obviously, staying safe is up there on the list. That's important. And, um, and seeing some families. So we're excited about it. Now, here's the wrinkle. We got COVID tests uh, late last week. Yep. We haven't gotten the results yet. So we expect to receive them while we're on the trip today. How's that for timing? There's at least a yeah, there's at least a, a little bit of a chance that I could be seven and a half hours into this trip and hang a U-turn and head right back. Hey, to just just quarantine in the in the rental. Yeah, I mean you're good to go. Just just stay in the car. <laughs> exactly right. The whole family, two weeks, be great. Uh, we had O on yesterday. We talked to Coach Ogeron yesterday, and, and obviously those guys are getting ready for football season. Uh, you you are instrumental in the season as far as the the, the production of it. Uh, what is your feeling as as we are just a little over two months out? Well, I'm really interested to see how college football, because that's our focus, right? Um, how college football is impacted by what the other sports are doing. And I, I just ran into a high level team yesterday, and I said, "Hey, man, we're we're playing baseball, right?" And he had all the right answers, and he was excited about it, and he was he was PR 101. And I like the guy, but I left the conversation and said, all right, he's half full of it because there's still so many hurdles to be cleared. And Major League Baseball is, is going to set an interesting precedent with the guys that are choosing not to play because of either their own health reasons or their family concerns. Obviously, they're professionals, um, and they have the right to say no. And whether or not that impacts um, their livelihood, you know, it, it's usually dependent upon – how many stacks they already have in the bank. Um, and college football is going to be faced with the, uh, with the PR problem if more and more professionals, whether that be MLB or NBA, say it's not right for me to play. And so they're obviously going to have to keep a finger on the pulse of what's happening uh, at all of the professional leagues, whether that be the PGA Tour or the other ones I just mentioned. Uh, Tom, there, there was a really good article on CBS Sports earlier this week kind of talking about the unspoken agreement in college football, this idea of almost herd immunity. Um, I believe Greg Dool wrote it, uh, but but what, what was your takeaway from that article? Did that make you concerned about the potential of college football? Yeah, that was a Dennis Dodd piece, and then I just, uh, Dennis another Dodd, there really go. good one Yeah, on, on Yahoo Sports this morning that talks to even more doctors and epidemiologists and, and guys and gals that are working closely with colleges and, and uh, football programs. Um, yeah, I, I just think 
when people immediately speak of herd immunity, they're generally speaking from a position of ignorance. And, yeah. and you know, I'm trying to learn as much as I can, but it was interesting that that, that number's got to be up above 70 percent or higher in some scenarios to really achieve herd immunity and the risk that you would if, – if you knowingly did this and you exposed – your players, uh, whether that was a conscious decision and plan or you just kind of let the chips fall where they may, uh, it seems to me to be um, a, a very high risk when it comes to the unknowns and what that could mean for the future health of your players, number one. And let it not be lost. We don't still know the long-term effects, Number, you know, on top of that. And we don't know how long these antibodies really stick around. That the virus hasn't been around that long for um, all of the studies that we typically get over decades and decades when it comes to infectious diseases. So uh, I, I am hesitant whenever I hear anybody use that phrase, and I'm curious, you know, what it might mean for teams going forward, and, and number one, the health of players. Hmm. Heart to heart, Tom Hart, weekly with us right here on Off the Bench, ESPN, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. Obviously, you can catch him on the SEC Network. He's really the voice and the face of the network comes uh, come fall and spring. You can catch him on all the broadcasts. And uh, it's a proud day here in, in uh, South Louisiana, one of our own experiencing some success in your company. Marcus Spears uh, was, uh, was, was moved from the SEC network onto the, uh, the NFL coverage. And Laura Rutledge uh, will sit alongside uh, Big Swagoo, Mina Kimes, Keyshawn Johnson, and Dan Orlovsky. Uh, you have worked alongside Laura and Marcus over the past uh, six years since uh, since the SEC Network was launched. Uh, what did you think about your counterparts getting the NFL coverage? I love it. I, I think it's fantastic. It's well-deserved for both of them. You're looking at two hard workers with big personalities. Everybody who meets uh, these people like them or love them. Um, you know, I, I look at what Marcus has accomplished thus far, and he's still just scratching the surface and, and what's in front of him. Here's a guy who could be the Charles Barkley of football coverage. I mean, he's got a huge personality. He, and this is the key, guys, and I, and I mean this um, in the most authentic way, is he does not care what anybody thinks. Mm-hmm. He does not care. He will share his opinion, and he will be able to defend it, and he's not looking to protect anybody or be sensitive to anybody else's claims, and that makes him – Highly entertaining, and and I can't, you know, he's he's already been involved in the NFL coverage with his work on Get Up, and I can't wait to see him tackle it further. But and by the way, the the line between the NFL and college, and, and maybe it's just my age, but it seems to be blurring a lot more over the previous five years. Whether it be, you know, a guy like Kingsbury going to the NFL and and their adoption of a lot of college offensive schemes. Um, it seems more intermingled than it ever has been before, and that will only help. You know, that only help Orlovsky, that'll help Marcus, that'll help everybody on that show. I, I think it'll be great. Anonymous user inside the huddle. His kids are really well behaved. They're yeah. so quiet in the wow. background. Yeah, it's a good fair point. Yeah, it's, been well, 12, we, it's been twelve minutes. We've got, it. We, we've got headphones in, and we got one hiding under a blanket. Um, they're still mad that we turned off the Lizzo and. Right when you guys called, we were getting an update on One Direction reunion, and mm. so the 14-year-old was not happy mm. when I crossed over the Bluetooth. Yeah, Put the look, Lizzo I, back on, Dad. I God hope Harry Styles. I, I hope it all works out as well. I'm I'm waiting anxiously to hear what happens. Tommy, enjoy the trip. Happy Fourth. All right, thanks, gang. See you. There's uh, Tom Hart from the SEC Network checking in. We'll close that hour one next.